morning. A little pre-recording of today's class. That way you can do it whenever you want. This weekend's a little bit busy at home for me because my son's room just got finished in the basement and we're moving him down there. So all the plans, all the wheels are in motion. And that way, if it's a beautiful day, then you can spend as much time as you want enjoying that day and then do your practice when you have time. So enjoy the practice today. Put on some music that you'd enjoy. Take your time to find something nice. And then when you're ready, you can close your eyes. In a comfortable seated position, if you want to lie down, you can lie down. And just begin to connect with your body, your space. Relax your body, feel your shoulders drop, your belly relax, the tension in your belly, let it go. Just notice how you feel this morning, or just how you feel right now whenever you decided to take this class. Notice how you feel, take some inventory with no judgment, just observing how you feel. Be easy on yourself. wherever you are today, however you're showing up, just be grateful, find some gratitude toward yourself for making the effort to show up. That's more than half of the practice, that's everything. If you didn't show up, you wouldn't practice, right? So you're here in whatever form you're in today, however your body feels, wherever your mind is and you're just willing to see what happens today as you move your body, as you calm your nervous system, which as we know is where everything happens, all healing, all potential, this unlimited potential that we are. It occur occurs in that field, that realm of unlimited potential, infinite possibilities, the miraculous, so even if just for today, just in this class right now, you allow yourself to believe that anything is possible, that the miraculous can happen, that life, no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, and we all have our struggles right now, I understand. You believe that anything is possible. You believe in miracles. Or just open to that grace. So as you breathe today, feel your whole body breathe. Every breath extends a little deeper. Feel your whole body strong. flexible, open. You just allow yourself to explore today as we move through. You just explore. See what yoga can do for you. See how you can really integrate it into your being into this moment, into your day, into your life. You reap the rewards just from being open, just for giving, putting effort in to the practice, the discipline, the dedication, all of that, that brought you here to now. 
And you just feel into your body. Notice what is going on today. You might start with some small movements. So in this class, always doing what you can. Option to take child's pose or to lie on your back or your side or your belly at any time. At home, you could sit down. Whatever you need to do to take a break. You can always stop and gather and, and kind of reconvene. You can have a journal handy during this class. And as you get deeply in touch, the goal here, not that there are really goals, but the idea is to bring yourself into this deep state, <clears throat> deep enough where you have these moments where you're like, there I am, there I am. I am inspired, I feel creative, I feel I am strong, I do remember my flexibility. You know, you kind of drop into this heart space that might prompt you to want to write something down, a word, a little, draw a little picture, whatever it is. So I always encourage a journal, rest when you need to, come back to your breath, remember to control your breath. Breathing in and out through the nose, feeling that great expansion on the inhale, and that slow surrender of the exhale where everything just comes back in nice and slow, comes back. Inhale expands all directions, forward, back, sides. Exhale contracts. But that contraction is kind of an expansion also in its own right. Like I like to imagine I'm breathing into my whole body. And the exhale, even though my body is contracting, my energy continues to expand. So we bring all of this in us, right? So if you're feeling a certain way today, good or bad, you breathe it in and you know your body is a tool, it's the perfect medicine to transform whatever it is that you either want more of or you want less of. You breathe it in. This, this notion a lot of times of breathing in something that we consider bad or negative and then breathing out something good. But we just breathe it in and out and know that our body and our energy, and our mind and our soul has the capability and the capacity to transform things. So it's okay to breathe it in and out. Breathe it in and out until you feel a shift, until you feel a softening. So we're constantly doing, we're in, we're in, what's the word that I'm trying to think of? Relationship, we're in relationship to our feelings and our sensations and all of that interaction that happens in our minds and our body all the time. We stay in relationship to that. We stay aware and we work with that through our breath. And you can do the same thing with other people. When you sit with another person, you notice how you feel in your own body. Right? You're listening deeply and you're noticing how it affects and there's this whole process that goes on as you become aware through your listening your body can soften it can open healing can occur within you and and even in your relationship with another so there is a lot to be said about observing and breathing breathing it all in breathing it all out and know that that is a method in and of itself of transformation healing. So we'll deepen our breath even more. Really lengthen up in your posture. Feel your chest open. Small movements. Start to roll your head from side to side. Roll your neck, your head. Roll the shoulders. You might bring your wrists. You might have your legs out in front now, rolling your ankles. So we're gonna to start to listen to our bodies. Keep your eyes closed for as much of this as you can so you really stay within and in tune with your body, with what's happening. Breathe and move, small movements, big movements, stretch, 
Just keep finding it over and over again. You find those little spaces that want to become more, you know, maybe those little sore spots that are just looking for a little bit of movement, shoulder rotation, your range of motion a few times in each direction. Breathe and move. Breathe and move. Take your hands behind your back if you can. Interlock your fingers or grab a wrist. Press your chest forward, lift your chin. Find that big, big stretch. Lengthen the spine. And breathe. And then we'll change direction here, rounding the back. So just take it forward. Does not have to be a perfect cat cow. Take it forward, rounding the back. Drop your head, move it a little bit, move your shoulders. Think about now you're flexing the spine anatomically, right? We look at it from the front of the body. So when we open forward, we're extending. And when we round, we flex the spine. So we're just finding space over and over again. Starting to move into your seated cat cow, feeling free to add any of the movements that we've already been through. Rolling the shoulders, the neck. Circling around, however you wanna do it. Twist, cat cow, circles. Just tune into your body and what it needs. Keep moving through, adding, subtracting, holding, right? And finding space in your body over and over and over again. We just keep finding space. What works, what doesn't. Just allow yourself to be free. And what makes it yoga is just keeping your breath connected. You find a rhythm of breath and movement. Inhale when you take an arm up, exhale when you take it down. That's all. Seated cat cow, inhale forward, exhale back. Circling, inhale halfway, exhale the other half. You just sink in, you drop in to knowing the flow of breath and movement that your body can and wants to do. Breathing and moving. Maybe some side bends. A combination of all these movements, adding more if you want. If you can find yourself in some other posture already, that's okay. You might meditate through the whole class and that is perfectly acceptable. The point is to make contact over and over again with the core of your being. So it really becomes more than just a physical practice. It becomes spiritual, it becomes meaningful, it becomes like a moving meditation or moving prayer. Use your whole body, the sacred thing that we have. Our body is so sacred. You use it to move and to kind of Offer your movement as a prayer, either to or simultaneously with, right? Then you give it up to God and you also dedicate your practice to someone that needs a little extra boost today, whatever that is. And it could be you. You can always include yourself. It's not selfish. In order to make a nice impact in the world, it's best to start with you and then extend that out. You know, use yourself as the service and extend that to others. Cultivate love and compassion and understanding and look at yourself when you have a reaction, when you have a quote unquote negative reaction to someone or something Keep moving while I'm talking, all different movements. See where you find yourself. This is a recording. You could be dancing around your room. 
be doing whatever you want as long as you're moving and you're breathing. You might be feeling energy. But you're, you're moving in a way, I was saying before. You come back and you observe what you might call negative thought or emotion. And you kind of analyze that. And how could you elevate that a little bit? How could you shift your perspective enough to soften to the possibility of more love, of unconditional love? And just see where that takes you without beating yourself up if you're like, I just can't feel anything for this person or this situation. You know, meditate and just think about softening in that meditation. And I bet you'll find a shift, big or small, doesn't matter. Lots of paint behind me. I've been doing my painting here. All of the mantra infused paintings that people have placed orders for. I've been working on them here. Getting deep into the practice of that. So when they receive it, it's like you instantly feel the, the resonance of that mantra in your painting. I love it. Love everyone that I do. Let's take it onto our hands and knees and move through cat cow. Hands and knees, finding comfort on your hands and knees. Maybe you put a cushion under your knees today. Start to move through, inhale drops the belly, exhale rounds the back. Let's stay here long enough so you can feel yourself drop into a meditation. Restore your mind, your body, as you connect with your soul. Inhale and exhale. Breathing and moving. Oh, feel free to add some movements in. You might rock your hips from side to side. You could bring it into a little twist, right? One side, other side, breathing and movement. Remember, keep that breath connected to the movement, rhythm and movement. You might rock back and forward, come back to your cat cow. Eyes are closed and you're just moving through. You're staying connected to your body. Finding big or small movements. I have found my movements to be really small now being pregnant. But just find movements in whatever you're doing, whether you want to feel big and open, or you want to feel a little more contained today, you find a mixture of both. Keep moving and breathing. Tuning in to your body. Maybe you drop a little inquiry. What is my medicine today? You know, and, and then you move in a way that unlocks something within you. So maybe you instantly feel better or it guides you to the next thing, the next place to find the medicine that will make you feel better. Breathe and making you feel better. You know, I mean, in any way, emotionally, physically, just maybe your spirits are a little bit low and you want them to be higher, or whatever it is. You can just inquire, what is my medicine, right, to the universe? And then follow the signs until you figure out how to feel better. It could take you on many, many paths. Coming into cobbler's pose now, but you can stick with your cat cow and all those movements for a while. Maybe you found yourself 
in a down dog and moving between down dog and plank. I'm gonna sit in cobbler's pose and move my spine. And you just keep moving and breathing, that's it. And as you tune in, you'll see your body knows exactly what to do. It knows the alignment. When you go slow enough and you pay attention to those transitions, your body knows, right, where your hips go. Your body knows how to drop in to boom, boom, like things are aligned. I feel like I could stay here. So you kind of know when you find a posture, when you can stay there for a really long time. And it takes time to work up to that. So you find that place in between where you're feeling, you're feeling your way into it and you come out of it and you go into it and you come out of it. That's why movement in your practice within each posture is so beneficial because you can find it. You can feel your body. You can find what's going on. You can start to like understand those little intricacies of the joints and the muscles and, and work with exactly where you are when you show up each time to practice. Now I have my legs out wide. I'm just gonna rock from side to side. So you're doing anything that we've already touched on so far in class. And you know, adding, if, you're, if you are used to practicing yoga all the time, familiar with a lot of postures, you could be adding whatever you want at this point. Just keep your breath and your body in sync. So if you start to get ahead of yourself, if you start to get out of breath, slow it down. Slow it down and control your breathing. When you control your breathing, you connect your mind and your body. You just come into, you come back to that meditative space. You come, come back to a calmer nervous system. So I'm reaching to one side breathing, doing what I can. I'm gonna lower my arm here so it's not as big of a stretch. Breathing. You know, heels to look up toward the ceiling and lift my chin, drop that shoulder over here. It was way up in my ear, so I'm gonna drop it. And then I'm gonna look down and over toward my toes. I'm gonna to flex my feet. So I'm pulling my toes back toward my hips. I'm gonna point my toes. My legs are as straight as I can get them without forcing or straining. And now I'm gonna take it over to the other side, open the chest, take my arm halfway. If you can take it up toward the ceiling and do that, go for it. <clears throat> and breathe. Feeling an extension on both sides of the torso when you come over. Lifting my chin. I'm gonna circle it around, looking at my toes flexing my feet and pointing my toes. Coming back to center. Taking my hands back behind me, leaning back, opening the chest, dropping my head back. Good, coming back up to seated. Easy cross leg or cobbler's pose. Close your eyes, meditate. Deep breath, check in with your body. Slow your breath down even more. In and out through the nose. Drop the chin a bit, lengthen the spine. Get really quiet within. And observe your thoughts. 
And you're imagining or just knowing, deep knowing that every thought, word, and action matters. And we don't beat ourselves up at all. But we just recognize that we can start to make different choices that nourish the process of every thought, word, and action matters. Breathe. See what rises and falls. Notice how it changes. A few more breaths here. And go ahead and come back to your hands and knees. So as you come back to your hands and knees, we're gonna work on our pigeon posture. So pigeon, so from your hands and knees, right? Your wrists are under your shoulders, your fingers are spread wide. From your hands and knees, we're gonna start by bringing the left knee forward up toward the left hand. You can take it inside of that left hand if it will come up that high. Otherwise, just take it right behind that left wrist. Take a right leg straight back behind you. Start to really reach through that right leg. And now the right knee, if you want to go deeper into this, you want to make sure your knee and your hip are aligned so that knee isn't going in at all toward the center point. It's not sticking way out. It's a line with the hip, so it's a straight line. Coming out from the hip, straight forward. And then your shin, if you want a deeper stretch, you'll take that lower leg and start to pull it out forward toward the top of your mat. You know, it might be an inch or two and that feels like it's enough. If you're super flexible and familiar with this posture, full expression is having your shin parallel with the top of your mat, but that is not a requirement. The requirement is working with your own, within your own practice and seeing what you can do. So you're just doing that, moving your shin a little bit. Notice where your hips go. If one starts to lift way higher than the other, make adjustments to bring those hips back to square. You can use pillows underneath your hips so that way they're even. Notice how your low back is feeling. If, it, if it's feeling compressed and confined, lower down a little bit. So you make space there. You don't ever wanna compress the low back. You always make adjustments. So that way you're not bringing discomfort into the low back. If you're okay being up high, think about elongating from your right heel out through the top of your head. Nice, long, long spine. So you're up high. Let's stay up here and breathe. If you need to be on your forearms, that's fine. Just find length in the spine. Lengthen your body. When you're holding up high before you lie down in your pigeon, you're, you're engaged. You're finding engagement in your body, in your legs, your arms, your core. You're breathing. You feel like regal and majestic. And we'll inhale. On your exhale, slowly begin to lower your torso down. So you might now come down to your forearms. You might have a pillow there, however far you can come down without overdoing it, then, then find that and rest there. If you can rest your forehead on something, that would be awesome. So you can just find total comfort in your pigeon. Sit on a cushion.
And you're just gonna hang out and breathe again and meditate. Bring this whole thing into a meditative practice. So you can rejuvenate and restore your mind and your body, your nervous system. It's just so happy when you do this. And you actually take the time to pay attention. Just keep breathing. Breathing and releasing tension as it rises. Use your breath to release that tension. Deepen your breath. Inhale. And exhale. Again, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. One more time, inhale. And exhale. Take it really slow and walk your hands back. And as you walk your hands back, feel your shoulders move. Drop your head as you come back up. Take a deep breath and decide whether or not you want to come back to your hands and knees or press back to down dog. And on an inhale, make that movement. Make your way into it. Either on hands and knees or into down dog. And then if you're in, well, either way, down dog or hands and knees, extend your legs, obviously one at a time, back behind you. Feel that extension, open the hips, take your time, add, maybe bend that leg, let it flop over, breathe, keep the core strong, move slow, stay in touch with your body. Don't force it anywhere. Breathe and notice. Breathe and notice, and then do the same thing on the other side, slow. You don't have to go right into it because I said that. Just take your time. Make your body come back to neutral. You release, you counter that pigeon posture that you just did. You wanna find a counter movement so your body can come back to neutral, but in a whole new way. It's like a completely different body when you come back. Breathe. All will all come down to hands and knees. Move through cat cow. Eyes closed. Focus on the spine. Slow movements like you're moving one vertebrae at a time. Inhale as you reach your heart forward. Exhale as you round your back. Breathe and move. Rock the hip from side to side. Come back to child's pose. Sit your hips back toward your heels. Sink your torso down. Take your knees out wide for this one. Knees out wide, big toes together. Sink in, sink back. Stay with your breath. Again, find your child's pose. It's okay to come into a posture and then move within the posture. I'm a fan of movement because your body doesn't always, hardly ever just drops right into something like, ooh, that's perfectly comfortable. Think about when you sit down in a chair. Normally you have to settle in, you gotta move around a little bit. So move around and find the perfect child's pose. Almost one way you're kind of floating. If your knees are feeling too much pressure, lift your hips. If your shoulders are feeling it too much, take your arms back, support your head, whatever you need to do. And breathe, feel expansive in your child's pose. Nice and expansive. Mm 
And take a few more breaths here. Let's inhale right into your belly. Low back, sides of your torso, and exhale. Feel yourself surrender into it more. Inhale. And exhale. One more time, let's inhale. And exhale. Inhale, rising up onto your hands and knees, moving again, however you wanna move. You could be moving through cat cow. You might bring your twists into it, just move slow. Let's take a minute or two here. You might come into a seated position and roll your shoulders or twist from side to side. Connect with your body and see what it needs. Ask yourself, how can I restore? What does it mean for you to restore your body today? And breathe as you do it, as you move, as you tune in. Trust that you have the wisdom, of course you do, that moves you in the most perfect way, that supports your day, supports your practice. Breathing, inhaling, remember breath and movement. You find a rhythm, you're doing yoga. Even when you go for a walk, and be mindful in your walking. Notice the pattern of breathing with your steps. You don't necessarily have to slow it down or speed it up, but just notice. And set the intention that you're breathing. There's that rhythm of breath and movement, even when you walk or if you run or if you bike, whatever you're doing, swimming, canoeing, paddleboarding, breath and movement, cooking, washing dishes, all of it, brushing your teeth, showering, folding laundry, Breath and movement brings you back, keeps bringing you back, because this path is life. There's no real destination. Sounds cliche, but it is true. So be present over and over again. Coming back to hands and knees, moving to the other side. When you're ready, right knee forward, left leg extended back. Take a peek over your left shoulder. Make sure that left leg is straight back behind you. Think about lengthening the back side of the body. You're lengthening, you're extending the front side of the spine. So you find that extension from the heel to the top of the head. And you're breathing with it. Remember, this is where you feel majestic and grand and you breathe so find it make adjustments you could be down on your forearms it doesn't matter how how high up you are here the only thing that matters is that you listen to your body and when you do that you find so much more within it. you find so much more movement so much more flexibility so much more strength because you're listening So breathe and listen. Inhale. Feel that expansion. Exhale, it expands more. You're becoming presence. That's what you're doing. Inhale. On the exhale, begin to lower it down again. Find comfort as you lower it down. Remember the knee is in line with the hip. The shin comes more forward if you want a deeper stretch. Your hips are square to the floor. They're even with the floor on both sides. Use pillows, make adjustments to make that happen. And then find as much comfort as you can as you come into it, releasing tension from your body, so relax your belly. A lot of the times we come into pigeon and our bellies are all tight and crunched up. Release tension in the belly. Breathe. 
That's it. You just have to breathe and listen to your body. The rising and falling of sensation in the body, the rising and falling of thoughts. It's all just waves, waves, waves. Nothing stays for very long. Unless it's something chronic, then we work with that. We work within that, right, to nourish and support it. It's, it's a part of us. It's not all of us. It's a part of us. So very mindful as we hold here. And remember, within each posture, it's okay to make adjustments and to move a little bit. As your body gets used to it, you might find more flexibility. So you go deeper. Sometimes it becomes really uncomfortable. You reach that threshold of discomfort that kind of lives more towards the edge of pain. So we back off. You never want to bring your body into pain when you practice yoga. But you breathe. Just keep breathing. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Be in your body. No need to figure anything out right now. Breathe. And rededicate yourself. One more breath here, inhale, and exhale. And start to make your way back up slowly. Listen to your body. Transitions are just as important as the posture. And then decide, doesn't matter what you did on the other side, decide whether you're coming into table on your hands and knees or back to down dog. And on an inhale, make your way there. When you're there, find it, breathe, settle in. Think about countering that pigeon pose. So what movements do you need to do to release from a pigeon? You had that hip flexor. This time it was the right hip flexor. It was all crunched up, which is beautiful because when you undo that, the blood flows in and you know, we, be, we just create um, a nourishing, a nourishing and lubricating joint. What else can you do to counter it, right? So you want to stretch it out in the opposite direction. Think about pigeon and think about the opposite of pigeon. Bringing yourself there. What can you do? Eyes are closed, tune into your body, move and breathe. What gives you great pleasure right now? Like this, this posture where you're like, ah, oh, this feels so good. I love it. Now find that, move slow, 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 slow. If you're doing any kind of hip opener or twist and breathe. And then do the other side, same thing on the other side, like you're countering pigeon and then, you know, spend some time there and then do the first side over again. And that's how you really start to observe a difference in the body is when you do Whichever side you were working on, twice. That, that goes with tree pose, it goes with almost every posture. Balance poses especially, because those are one of the biggest struggles in yoga. So you wanna do each side twice. Or whichever side you feel the most imbalanced or whatever it is. If there's a side that you want stronger, do that side twice. A side you want more flexible, do that side twice. Revisit. Become a scientist of yourself. See what you need. Learn what worked last time. What could work this time? What didn't work? How can I be more aware? How can I remember that transitions are just as important as the posture? They are postures. They move you and create the, the beautiful geometry 
the geometrical shape that, that you become when you do these postures. Take one more breath wherever you are. And then come back to a seated position. Or if you feel like you want to squat right now, you can come into a squat. So your feet are maybe a little bit wider than hip width. You sink your backside down. Maybe your hands stay on the floor. Maybe they come together at heart center, elbows to the insides of your knees, pressing them out. Knees pressing back onto your elbows. You do what you can in a squat. You listen to your body. And if you feel like it's, you've had enough, you come into a seated position. So you're either seated or in your squat and you're breathing. If you're seated, you could be in cobbler's pose with your feet, soles of the feet together. You could be in an easy cross leg. Either way, whether you're in a squat or a seated position, lengthen the spine. Feel open through the front side, drop the shoulders, open the chest, drop your chin, breathe. In your squat, bring yourself gently into a seated position. Close your eyes, tune into your body. What else does it need before you relax? What else does it want? Another child's pose, or maybe a happy baby, a bridge, a twist. There's so many options. One or two, pick one or two that would really just seal the deal today. It would nourish every ounce of you. And we'll breathe through it together, whatever you decide. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale. And exhale. A couple more times. Inhale. Finishing up. And exhale. Start to finish up. Start to make your way back. Make your way onto your back. If you're not there already. When you get there, pull your knees into your chest. Rock it out, let your head move with you. Wrap your arms around your legs, hold behind your knees, whatever you need to do, drop the shoulders back. Rock it out and breathe. Rock it out and breathe. And when you're ready, you come back to center. Placing your feet on the mat. Take your knees together, knees together, feet out a little bit wider than hip width. It's okay if your knees don't stay together, but you're at least your legs do not have to do any work when you do this. That's the point. You're relieving tension in the low back and you're not trying to hold your legs up. And then we'll take our hands and massage our temples, massage the temples the sides of your head, however much of your head you want to massage. Think about moving your scalp versus rubbing your hair, right? Move the scalp so you press firmly in little circles, massage it out. Feels so good. Massage your jaw. 
very gently gliding your fingers under your chin down your neck lots of lymph nodes there we want to be gentle and if you go down the back of your neck you pull that forward a little bit smooth out the forehead those thinking lines and those worry lines right smooth them out sinuses you can massage along those sinus lines all the way back to your ears making yourself as comfortable as possible for deep relaxation and grab a book Wild Mercy by Mirabai Star. Living the fierce and tender wisdom of the women mystics. So just allow yourself to let go for the next few minutes. And I'm just going to read to you. I find it to be so nice and relaxing to be read to whether the words have meaning or not. But if you find that these words have meaning at all, then it's a bonus. And I'm just gonna read where I left off in the book. I'm still in the introduction. She's talking about the tapestry of the book. Here's how I have built this book. Each chapter of Wild Mercy is a tapestry of my favorite teachings from women of wisdom of the past and present, interwoven with my own reflections and personal stories, and ending with a suggested practice, often but not always a writing prompt, so that you can integrate the topic at hand with your own experience. Because of my love for haiku, I open each chapter with a three line poem crafted in the traditional five, seven, five syllable structure to serve as a distilled essence of that theme. Each chapter focuses on a particular station of the women's wisdom journey, such as navigating heartbreak or walking the path of creative self-expression. To illumine each topic, I've selected certain mystics goddesses, contemporary teachers, and seekers from a vast array of possible exemplars. I could easily have included dozens of others and have allowed my particular intimacy with each one to guide many of my choices. It is my hope that you, like I, will find yourself shining from the luminous mirror of these wisdom beings, that you will identify with their struggles and be encouraged by their breakthroughs. They will forge living relationships with them as your ancestors and guides, draw on their power, embody their essential qualities. It is my prayer that together we will welcome the wisdom of women back into the collective field, where it may help to transform the human family and heal the ravaged earth. This book is more than a book. It's an invitation. We are making a flying carpet here to carry us through our lives as contemporary mystics, masquerading as ordinary people. People who hear the call both to turn inward and to step up, to cultivate a contemplative life, and to offer the fruits in service. Thanks to an array of wise and wild women and a few goddesses, the way is flooded in light, even, perhaps especially, when our eyes perceive it as dark. Enter the garden where the walls melt and trees blossom, vibrant, 
quietude, turning inward, cultivating contemplative life, opening. Contemplative life flows in a circular pattern. Awe provokes introspection, which invokes awe. Maybe you're making dinner and you step outside to snip chives from the kitchen garden, just as the harvest moon is rising over the eastern slopes. She is full and golden, like one of those pregnant women who radiate from within. Suddenly, you cannot bear the beauty. Scissors suspended in your hand, tears pooling at the corners of your eyes. You nearly quit breathing. Your gaze softens and the edges of your individual identity fade. You are absorbed into the heart of the moon. It feels natural and there is no other place you'd rather be. But the onions are burning and so you turn away and cut your herbs and go back inside. You resume zoom stirring the sauce and setting the table. This is not the first time you have disappeared into something beautiful. You have experienced the unfettering of the subject object distinction while holding your daughter's hand as she labored to give birth to your grandson. When you curled up in bed with your dying friend and sang her Haska Vainu, the Hebrew prayer, prayer for a peaceful sleep, while yielding to your lover's lips, you have lost yourself in heartbreak, then lost the desire to ever regain yourself then lost your fear of death. You long ago relinquished your need for cosmic order and personal control. You welcome unknowingness, which is why seemingly ordinary moments like moon rises and lovemaking undo you. The veil has been pulled back. Everything feels inexhaustibly holy. This is not what they taught you in the church of your childhood. Your soul has been formed in the forge of life's losses, galvanized in the crucible of community, fertilized by the rain of relationship, blessed by your intimacy with Mother Earth. You have glimpsed the face of the divine where you least expected it. And this is why you cultivate contemplative practice. The more you intentionally turn inward, the more available the sacred becomes. When you sit in silence and turn your gaze toward the holy mystery you once called God, the mystery follows you back and into the world. When you walk with a purposeful focus on breath and bird song, your breathing and the twitter of the chickadee reveal themselves as a miracle. When you eat your burrito mindfully, Gratitude for every step that led to the perfect combination of beans and cheese and tortilla. From grain and sunlight to rain and migrant labor fills your heart and renders you even more inclined to be grateful. So you sit down to meditate, not only because it helps you to find rest in the arms of the formless beloved, but also because it increases your chances of being stunned by beauty when you get back up. Encounters with the sacred that radiate from the core of the ordinary embolden you to cultivate stillness and simple awareness in the midst of the world that is begging you to distract yourself. This is no easy practice, yet you keep showing up. You are indomitable. You are thirsty for wonder. I encourage you to stay for as long as you can, as long as you'd like. And of course, journal when you're done. Send me a text, email me, let me know. I love, love, love to hear from you. I love it when I do hear from you. And if you've been reserved for whatever reason and sharing that with me, don't be reserved. Just do it. And I'll see you all soon. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.